It's often missed from the best space games out there, orbital mechanics and Newtonian physics. Fortunately then, Flight of Nova has this in spades and has more or less perfected it. Now, I took a look at this game a few months ago, but recently a member of my Discord server asked me to take another look. So here we are, thanks for the video suggestion, uh, by the way. Now what we're going to do in this video is see uh, just how accurate and how realistic those orbital mechanics are. Firstly though, some of the basics on the flight system itself. The ship has two modes, regular flight as well as VTOL. You need VTOL to uh, both take off as well as land, we've just successfully done that right here. We also, up in space, have a different form of flight with full-on Newtonian physics. You can see right here that I'm currently navigating with RCS, that's Reaction Control Systems. And this allows us to make perfect use of the game's Newtonian flight model. Now, in terms of orbital mechanics and very importantly here, up on the top left-hand corner of the screen, you can see a blue circle. The blue circle represents the planet I'm in orbit of. The white circle represents my orbit line. So right now, we're in almost perfect orbit around this planet. If we didn't do anything whatsoever, we'd simply keep orbiting this planet almost indefinitely. But we need to get down, and the way to do that is slow our velocity. We're currently moving at 7,800 meters per second. So we need to reduce that velocity right down. The way to do that is pace our ship to a retrograde, which is that icon in the center of the screen. That means our ship is now facing in the opposite direction to its motion. As soon as we do that, we fire the thrusters. A bit too hard there, you can see me blacking out. Now down on the bottom right hand side of the screen on the MFD, you can see the white orbit line is now changing. As I slow down, that orbit line is now intersecting with the planet itself. The reason for this is very simple, it's gravity. All the time we've got enough velocity, we can avoid hitting the planet, but the moment we slow down, the gravity will kind of capture us and pull us downwards. The more we slow down, the more that that white line will intersect with the planet. So right now our descent is relatively shallow, but I'm going to continue the burn to make that descent even steeper. So here you can see that the descent is pretty steep, we're now going to turn around and face prograde, that is face the direction of our ship's motion. We've still got a pretty high velocity, just over 5,000 meters per second, and yeah, you'll soon see this is still way too fast, as a part of my ship will break up on re-entry. That's also partially possibly due to keeping the angle of my ship incorrect. Now over on the middle right hand corner of the screen we can see air density. As we get closer inside the planet's atmosphere, the air density will start to thicken up. That's because closer to the ground, the atmosphere is increasingly thicker. Now this will have two effects on our ship. Firstly, it will slow down the velocity. Secondly, it will cause a drag on the ship, which is a part of what causes well, the wing to break off in just a moment. That in combination with the heat effects going on. So there you go, pulling apart a little bit, velocity a little bit too high, not quite sure whether my angle here of approach is a little bit off, that may have helped, but yeah, the velocity should have slowed down just a little bit more. At any rate, we do soon get in the atmosphere, the ship fortunately is still in a decent enough uh, condition to land, I'm going to accelerate things up a little bit here, Eventually, once I'm close to the ground, I change to VTOL engines, and then, there we go, touchdown. So, it's clear that we can use orbital mechanics to exit orbit, but the question is, can we get into orbit from the ground? Now, in any other space game out there, or most space games out there, that's simply a case of just flying up away from the planet, and sooner or later, you'll be stuck there up in orbit, or you could simply fly away from the planet. In reality, however, things are not quite so straightforward, and anyone who's played Kerbal Space Program will be able to attest to that. So what we're going to do here is fly up, away out of the atmosphere, up into space, and then try and create a perfect orbit. If you're going to try this, if you have access to the demo or the full game, you will need to make sure you've got a full tank of fuel. I've tried to do it on a tank of 50%, and, well, that doesn't help. Now, the trick here in to get into orbit is to create that perfectly round orbit line that we had previously. And, well, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but one way to not do it is to fly straight up vertically. If you do that, your orbit line will essentially go straight up, 
and then fall straight back down again. Remember that gravity is always trying to pull your ship down to the ground. So imagine you're down on the ground and throwing a ball up into the air. That ball comes straight down. But if you, fly it, if you throw it rather straight off into the distance towards the horizon, it will go in a more of a straight line. So that's the uh, kind of line that we want to create. Of course, gravity will still pull that ball back to the ground and that will happen with our ship. But we want that drop to be far more gentle than it would be if you went straight up in a straight line. Now, any moment here, yep, there we go. You can now see the orbit line. That's because we've reached a suitable altitude. The planet, again, is the blue line. The white line is our orbit line. The height of the orbit, that the height of the white line that we're just about to reach there is known as the aparapsis. That's the highest point of the orbit line. The periapsis is on the opposite side. That's the lowest point of the orbit line. And you can see that that intersects more or less with the center of the planet. So the trick right now is to extend out that orbit line to get ourselves into a true orbit. And to do that, we simply keep accelerating. Now we could accelerate up away from the planet and that would give us a line that heads away from the planet but still intersects back with the planet as for a while at least the planet would still be trying to uh, pull us back down. So what we want to do is keep our apoapsis fairly low, fairly consistent. It's around about 96 kilometers there, 100 kilometers. So we want to keep manipulating our pitch up a little bit and down a little bit to try and keep that consistent. And you can see our periapsis, remember that is the lowest point of the orbit line, is now increasing. Once they're more or less matching each other, they're under, both around about 100k here, or both slightly over 100k, we can now completely uh, well, stop the thrust. We don't need to accelerate any further. We've now got a velocity of 7,800 meters per second, and you can see we've got very close to a perfect orbit line. So yeah, there we have it. A flight of Nova has some excellent flight models here with regards to orbital mechanics and Newtonian physics. Something that makes for some really compelling gameplay. If you're just simply flying around, it's uh, truly fun to just come up into orbit here, try and perfect your orbit, and then fly back down to the planet again. But of course, there are some additional things you can do. There are some missions involved in the game. There's also various space stations and other areas that you can try and dock with, and some landing pads down on the planetary surface as well, which you can try and reach. If there's enough interest in doing so, I'll make a video on some of the missions. If you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments section below. Meanwhile, if you'd like to try the game out for yourself, you can do so with a free demo that's available on Steam. Alternatively, if you want to purchase the game, it's available for around about £23. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.